أشهد أن لا إله إلا Welcome to a new world of booking travel, the lowest airfares, discounted holiday packages, cruises, customized group tours and a whole lot more. Introducing to you a leader in the Canadian travel industry for over 25 years, an award winning consolidator for over 50 airlines, over 2 million tickets sold and the lowest international airfare guarantee, Gala Travels, a name you can trust, galatravels.com, always giving you more. Islam in Focus is brought to you by PortServe International Limited, providing cargo handling services internationally. Please visit portserve.com. Islam in Focus is brought to you by eShipper.com, allowing its customers to ship and save on all shipping requirements. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Islam in Focus. Please be sure to join us every Saturday mornings from 10 a.m. to 10.30 on the following networks. Rogers Channel 129, Bell Express View Channel 217, and Star Choice Channel 348. Today we are honored to have with us again in the studio Sister Shayos Jafardala. Sister Shayos lectures um, on Islam at mosques, universities, private gatherings, and has traveled internationally to speak in the United Arab Emirates, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, uh, all throughout the states, um, Canada, the UK and uh, she holds a bachelor's degree in psychology as well as a master's degree in the field of education. Assalamu alaikum Sister Shairoz. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Welcome to our show. Thank you. Today we will be discussing the holy month of Ramadan, a sacred month in, what, in which many know that us Muslims fa uh, fast rather from dawn to sunset. So I'd like to begin by asking you Sister Shairoz, um, the month of Ramadan like I said, is considered one of the most sacred months for us Muslims. Um, could you help our viewers in understand the significance? I think the best way to understand the significance of um, this holy month is to look no further than the uh, khutbah that was given by the Holy Prophet of Islam, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in his famous khutbah of Shabaniyah, which was given during the end part of uh, Shaban, where he told the people about this approaching month which comes after Shaban, Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan. And the Holy Prophet ﷺ called out to the people and he basically invoked upon them to, to be alert and to get up. And he said, oh people, this month of Ramadan that has approached you with its mercy and blessings. This is the month that is the best of all months in the estimation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he explained, he said, its days are among the best of days. Its nights are among the best of nights and its hours, each and every hour is the best of the hours. Showing the people that no moment of this holy month must be ignored. And then he explained to the people that remember, you are the chosen ones. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you. You have been in this month selected as the recipients of honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We uh, often find people uh, praying, ya Allah, make me alive for the next month of Ramadan in my life. And, um, uh, you know, uh, often we find children saying, why would I want to wa wait for Ramadan? I'm going to have to fast and, and be hungry and thirsty and uh, it's going to be difficult. Why would you want that day to come? The Holy Prophet وسلم, is showing us that it is an honor to be selected for this particular month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept you alive and kept you able to do good deeds in this month. I often give this example that it's much like um, some uh, very high-end shop where they have the most beautiful um, uh, merchandise and if there's a sale and it's a very big sale and uh, we find often that uh, high-end shops uh, sometimes do this kind of uh, what they call midnight madness sales and uh, that they say it's a madness it's a very low uh, amount that you're going to be paying and um, whoever wants to come between these few hours it's 60% off, 70% off, crazy sale. 
And I know in particular in Toronto, there's a, a bridal shop where they sell beautiful wedding gowns. And uh, they sell them once a year for a day at a fraction of the cost. And they show this on TV where women line up for hours all night long waiting for this particular sale to happen and once the doors are opened there is a mob of people rushing in grabbing whatever comes in their hands trying it on in the hall in the in the uh, in the aisles and taking it without even trying it and saying whatever it is i'll take it because it's a deal ramadan if you have uh, if, if, if you would allow me to take you into that metaphor is just like that kind of place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everything you do is magnified and amplified and it's for a specific amount of time when you see that moon start working hard every little bit of goodness that you do is going to be counted in such an incredible way and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam explains he says in this holy month when you breathe it has the thawab heavenly reward of tasbih the praise of allah on rosary beads and your sleep has the thawab of worship so if a person is in a state of worship throughout this month and is fasting sleeps during his fast even his sleep is considered an act of ibadah because he is in a form of worship he is fasting but asleep even his breathing because he's fasting and involved in good deeds throughout the day if each breath is, the prophet explains is like he's doing dhikr he is doing tasbih and he says your good deeds are accepted in this month the doors of mercy are open your invocations your dua is accepted therefore you must invoke your lord you must call out to him and he says with your heart free from sins and evil so that allah may bless you observe fast in this month recite the holy quran and he says verily the person who does not receive mercy and benevolence of allah in this month must be very in unfortunate indeed and it must be having a very difficult end in the hereafter meaning that it would be the most terrible of the terrible who would not be accepted in this month anybody and everybody and even the most terrible if they reach out they will be accepted and so do not lose this opportunity um, and he says also while fasting remember the thirst and hunger of the tomorrow in the qiyamah that when you are feeling thirsty and hungry imagine how it will be on the day of judgment when you will be in that heat when the sun will be so close that you will have no place no shade to hide under when you will be hungry and thirsty waiting for your book of deeds to be given to you remember your hunger and thirst on that day and behave accordingly also one of the reasons that muslims fast is so that they can feel not only a, a, a connection with their Lord and uh, to bow down to his uh, his command of fasting but also to feel a connection to the less fortunate it is this month that Muslims are told especially to give to the poor alms and uh, to the needy and to uh, pay respect to the elders and uh, this is the month to especially do these deeds because every little thing is amplified in its blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mashallah um, so could you maybe uh, guide us into a couple of um, acts expected as a Muslim during the month of Ramadan? Well, um, there are many acts that are um, especially asked of a Muslim and especially prohibited for a Muslim. And uh, in this particular khutbah, the Holy Prophet wasallam talks about it in detail. He says this is a month to, be, to feel pity for the poor uh, pity for those who are younger towards you and to be kind towards your relatives and your kinsmen showing us that in this particular month a lot of people feel that if you're fasting it's all right to be pretty grouchy and uh, you know and, and to and to hide behind that and say sorry i was so rude to you but you know i was fasting come on that's that type the fasting time it is especially the time when a person has to be especially kind and benevolent to those that are younger than us uh, to be kind to the relatives to be kind to the kinsmen and what is prohibited is to guard this tongue not only from food and drink but also against unworthy words 
And uh, the Prophet says, your eyes from such scenes that are not worth seeing, they're forbidden. And your ears from such sounds that, you sh that should not be heard by you. So we find that it's a holistic kind of fasting. Uh, often we'll find in the hadith that if you have fasted and yet you've told a lie, or you were unkind, you were rude, or you entertained a bad thought, you saw a haram thing, then your fasting was not was not accepted and it was not complete. The fasting is holistic. It has to be for every part of the body, for the heart, for the soul, for the mind, for the spirit. The Prophet says, be kind to orphans so that when your children become orphans, they also may be treated with kindness. That this is an act of compassion and goodness that we need to hand down to others. And do invoke, invoke Allah to forgive your sins. One of the things to do in this holy month is to do astaghfar, dhikr Allah and forgiveness, uh, astaghfar for our sins. Do raise your hands at the time of salah uh, as it is the best time for asking for mercy. The Holy Prophet wasallam says that at the time when your prayer is completed, don't just leave your prayer mat. This is the time when Allah has become compassionate, merciful, much like a mother when we show love to her. And she says, what do you need now? Tell me. What can I do? This You've pleased me so much. I want to make you happy now. At that time, raise your hands and raise them high. There is an etiquette and a style of asking from one's Lord. And then he says, when we invoke at such times, we are answered by him. When we call him, he responds. When we ask for anything, it is expect, accepted by him. And he says, my, my people you have made your conscience the slave of your desires make it free by invoking for from him astaghfar and he says look at look at your back it is breaking under the heavy load of your sins so prostrate before him for long intervals and make it lighter showing us that this holy month is the time to spend our time in sajda not at the dinner table eating and do understand fully well that Allah has promised in the name of His Majesty and Honor that He will not take to task such people who fast and offer Salat in this month and perform this prostration and will guard their bodies against the fire of hell and the Day of Judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us through His Holy Messenger that if you fast, you have allowed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to free you. Uh, you have asked him to free you and allow you from the fire of hell. Uh, he says, oh, oh people, in this month, feed others. Do iftar. Uh, uh, feed the others. And even if you only have just a date to give to someone, even that. Uh, if you can re uh, free a slave, he will, forget, he will forgive your s sins. And, uh, and then he says to the people, give your smile, give your charity. If you have nothing to give, at least be kind to others and, uh, and those who work for you. Make light their work. L um, make it uh, easy for them uh, so that Allah will make it for easy for you on the day of judgment. Anybody who does not tease others in this month, especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, will free that person from his wrath on the day of Qiyamah. Anybody who respects and treats the orphans kindly on this day, uh, on this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look at him with dignity on the day of Qiyamah. Anybody who treats well his relatives in this month, Allah will bestow on him mercy. Such a time to be kind, especially to the relatives. He has singled out important things to do in this khutbah and called the people, listen, listen to me. I'm telling you something very important. Relatives coming into this particular passage shows us that we can't just be kind to only our immediate family, but that the love and the compassion and the mercy must extend far beyond. And um, he says, being kind to your relatives, Allah will be kind to you on the day of judgment. And anybody who is unkind to his relatives in this month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep him away from his own mercy on the Day of Judgment. The, this particular month is the time to call relatives to eat. So you've done two things already. Fed the people for fasting and been kind to a relative. So doing things that include everything together, uh, all the prescriptions that the Prophet has given, means that the sawab is amplified and then doing it on the much more holier nights of that month truly makes everything magnified even more so. Um. Now, besides preparing, you know, our food before the month of Ramadan, <laughs> yeah. um, how can we prepare ourselves spiritually? 
for this month. So true that uh, most of us are so busy making our samosas in advance <laughs> and, and, and buying lots of food and truly to feed our our family is an act of ibadah. Of course. And our children who have been fasting, uh, it, they need to feel happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with such wonderful food. But it is important that there is a mental and a spiritual preparation. In fact, true preparation for the month of Ramadan happens months in advance. The three holy months are Rajab, Shaban, Ramadan, which happen one after the other. And these three months are so special and so sacred that we are uh, recommended to be fasting even in those months. Culminating in Ramadan, by that time, one has already attained a level of discipline over food, over vices, and and made themselves in the habit of being good all the, at all times and being aware of the tongue and the hands and the feet and everything is behaving as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Um, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that this the month of Rajab, for example, is such a great month that uh, whoever in the month of Ramadan, uh, he says, remember, the month of Rajab is the month of God. Month of Shaban is the month of my month, and the month of Ramadan is the month of my Ummah. And he says, he who fasts one day during the month of Rajab shall be subjected to the Lord's satisfaction, shall be distanced from his wrath, and one of the doors of hell should be closed for him. And um, so many hadiths we find where we are told uh, that we should be fasting. We find that in the month of Rajab, uh, one of the companions of the sixth Imam came to see him and the Imam asked him, have you fasted in this month? And he answered, no, Wallah, O son of Messenger of God, I, 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 I have not fasted in this month of Rajab. And the sixth Imam said to him, you have lost such a great amount of blessings that no one but Allah can understand the greatness of your loss. This is the month that the Lord has given much honor and greatness than any other month than Ramadan. So there's a preparation, a spiritual preparation, and there, is other, there are other ways. Before the month of Ramadan comes, one should be praying for success. Remember, as Muslims, all the things that we are supposed to be doing are all coming into effect in that particular month. And studies have shown that if you want to perfect any habit, or lose any bad habit that one should do it for at least a month and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what kind of uh, people he has created and what our fitrat is knows that if we do this for a month and really stay on it and really work on some of our vices and work at perfecting some of our good deeds that this uh, by the end of the month will have uh, become really proficient at it the sixth Imam Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam has a beautiful dua that he has written and he said oh Allah the month of Ramadan has commenced and you have made it obligatory upon us to fast and you have revealed your Quran in this holy month as, 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 and Allah help me help us observe this fasting accept it from us and keep us safe during it and uh, he says keep us sound for us with easiness make it easy for us and give us good health verily you have power over all things the uh, holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also a dua that he has uh, has written and he has says and he says in it oh praise be to allah uh, oh Allah, please do grant us strength to observe fasting and practice acts of worship in this month make our steps firm assist us against the unbelieving people oh Allah um, surely you are the one uh, the self-sufficient while I am poor nothing can overcome you you are the master while I am your slave you are the all, all forgiving while I am guilty you are the all merciful when I am mistaken and you are the creator while I am your creature you are the everlasting while I am mortal I thus beseech you in the name of uh, your mercy that you may forgive me have mercy upon me excuse my offenses for you have power over all things uh, the beautiful dua of Imam Ali alayhi salam where uh, it's called the munajat of Imam uh, of Imam Ali alayhi salam uh, which we recite uh, in, in Ramadan in one of the nights of Laylatul Qadr is uh, very much like this dua where he says Mawla, ya ya Mawla and then says you are the master, I am the slave, you are the forgiving and I am the guilty. 
such beautiful du'as that can help us prepare for the coming of, of Ramadan. Of course. So, um, are these the only du'as? Are there any other du'as that have been written by our imams uh, specifically about Ramadan? Yes, definitely. Uh, the sixth imam um, has also written an, uh, another beautiful du'a uh, in preparation for the holy month of Ramadan. It is his du'a for Ramadan, the sixth imams. And he says, Oh Allah, um, Pardon me, O the generous, your pardon, your pardon. O the generous, O my Allah, you did admonish me, but I responded not. You did chide, but I cared not for it. What excuse have I now? And uh, then he speaks about the, what he wants to do in this month. And he says, O oh Allah, keep me alive to live the life of righteousness. Cause me to die in the best death, in a state of love in my heart towards your friends, in a state of enmity towards your enemies. We know also that uh, the Imam Zaman salam has written the, um, the beautiful dua of, um, that we recite in Ramadan. And uh, that dua that we recite every single day, uh, especially talks about, O oh Allah, make this month, make me um, a steadfast uh, believer. You keep calling out to me in love and I keep uh, um, turning away from you as if you are being too familiar with me. And then in the end, that whole section where we pray for the safety of our Imam Zamana alayhi salam. One of the very beautiful du'as that I wanted to share with you today is uh, the du'a written by uh, the fourth Imam, Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, in his uh, Saifai Sajadiyya, in his uh, Psalms of Islam. And this book uh, is available in um, not only in our Tablik bookstore, but also in. Um, online to read for free alislam.org duas.org and many other websites have this and uh, not only do you have the Arabic but the beautiful English translation Urdu translations are also available and you can listen to the translation listen to the Arabic truly no excuse for us anymore not to read these kinds of books this uh, particular dua the two that I really wanted to speak about the 44th and the 45th these are duas that Imam wrote when he saw the moon the crescent moon uh, that would that was about uh, signaling the the new moon for uh, the month of Ramadan, and then there's the dua that he recites when the 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 Eid mood a moon is shown the mood the the the, the moon for celebration, and and what he says when he says goodbye to the month of Ramadan, truly in preparation for Ramadan one should read both these duas. So one is in the mode of what to expect in this particular month and how to behave. Look at what he says in the dua when the when uh, Ramadan is approaching, where he says, "Oh Allah." Stretch not my hand towards the, unf to the, towards the forbidden. Let me not w walk with my feet towards that which you have considered haram. Let my stomach not hold what you have made, uh, only what you have made lawful, not what you have made haram. And let my tongue speak only what you have exemplified. Let me not do anything which um, takes me away from you and gives me your punishment. And then he talks about... Uh, make me a steadfast uh, person in my prayers. Make these the pillars of my faith. And then such a beautiful section where he says, give us success in this month to tighten our rela relations with our relatives. Sila rahim. And let us do that with devotion and with gifts. So Imam shows us how to do it here, right? And then he says, let us attend to our neighbors with bestowal and giving and give our gift to the poor, rid our possession from claims. And, and then he talks about, let us let give me the tawfiq to go back to him who has gone far away from him to so me so he's talking about reconciling make peace for that with that person who is angry who has shown enmity towards me and then he talks about um, how that in this month oh my lord so many necks are going to be released uh, oh allah let my neck be one of those let this particular month be that month for for the, for the for my neck to be released and such a beautiful thing when he says goodbye when he's saying peace be upon you o month uh, whose parting pains me and whose leaving leaves me with gloom and loneliness what happens to us who are waiting for the the, the eid the moon to show we're like yes now we don't have to fast anymore but the true believer 
crying that now this month is gone where I used to come to the mosque every day. I used to mix with people. Truly something that a Muslim, Muslim needs to do. We can't be hidden in our homes and expect to exercise all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made incumbent upon us. We need to come out there and and now put it to, to the test. Uh, now that time when I was reciting Quran, when I was doing all these du'as, when I was commanding, I was saying, I can't, I can't swear, I can't um, lie, I can't hear music. All these things, now, now I feel that I can do it all. But we shouldn't. We should say now that I have been able to do it all this month, now the following month also. And he says, peace be upon you. O month, who was a helper against shaitan, peace be upon you, O month, that uh, when the sins were erased. And uh, I would, inshallah, um, hope that in the last few minutes that we have, that we can speak a little bit about Laylatul Qadr. Yes, actually, that was uh, something I wanted to ask you. Just briefly tell our audiences what Laylatul Qadr is. I surely uh, hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me some time to go into this because hidden in the last 10 days of this particular holy month are special, special moments where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are equivalent that particular night to a thousand months. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in uh, Surah, Surah Qadr says, surely... Uh, this is a grand night and huma adraka ma laylatul qadr what will make you comprehend what this great night is and uh, truly this particular night uh, is a night to 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 spend in invocation uh, somebody asked the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what's so special about this night and he said you know it has been from the beginning of time that this night was special. And Nabi Musa alayhi salam said, Ya Allah, I want to be close to you. What should I do? Ya Allah, I need your mercy. What should I do? Oh my Lord, I'm in need of the passport to cross the, the bridge, the Pule Sirat. Oh my God, I'm in need of the trees in paradise and their fruits. What shall I do? Oh my Lord, I seek deliverance from the fire. Oh my God, I seek your good pleasure. What should I do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, Oh Nabi Musa, Oh Musa Kalimullah, the one who could speak to your Lord. If you want to be close to me, Stay awake on the night of Laylatul Qadr. O oh Musa, you are in need of my mercy? Then show mercy to the poor on Laylatul Qadr. O oh Musa, you want to cross the Pule Sirat and need a passport to cross that bridge? Well, give to the poor on Laylatul Qadr. Musa, you want the trees in paradise and their fruits? Then that's for that person who seeks forgiveness from me on Laylatul Qadr. And you need deliverance from the fire? And then that is for that person who remembers me, Allah, on the light of Laylatul Qadr. Finally, O oh Musa, you seek my good pleasure, and then that is for that person who does even two rakat in the, in the, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night of Laylatul Qadr. Thank you so much, Sister Shayas, for sharing us the importance of Ramadan uh, with us and all our viewers. Um, that is all the time we have for today. If you have missed any of our shows, you may log on to www.islaminfocus.org. Thank you for watching. Welcome to a new world of booking travel, the lowest airfares, discounted holiday packages, cruises, customized group tours and a whole lot more. Introducing to you a leader in the Canadian travel industry for over 25 years, an award winning consolidator for over 50 airlines, over 2 million tickets sold and the lowest international airfare guarantee, Gala Travels, a name you can trust, galatravels.com, always giving you more. Fellas. Islam in Focus is brought to you by PortServe International Limited, providing cargo handling services internationally. Please visit portserve.com. Islam in Focus is brought to you by eShipper.com, allowing its customers to ship and save on all shipping requirements. It's yet another day, feeling all alone Without your presence, I just can't go on My eyes are searching for you everywhere After the end of the Friday prayer